Hi guys, it's Laura from Travel and Teach Online FAQ and in today's video I will share all the ways that I use Medicam. This video isn't really supposed to be a tutorial, it's more just giving you some ideas. So if you don't use the program already or you're just starting out and you're not really sure what to do with it, hopefully this will give you some inspiration. If you have no idea what Medicam is, don't worry. Uh, Medicam is basically a software program for your camera that just means your camera can do some extra cool things in the classroom. There are already some great tutorials out there on how to set Minicam up. I will link the wonderful cats tutorial down below because it's really simple and clear. If you don't use Minicam already I really recommend giving it a go. It's pretty simple to use once you've figured out how. You do need a decent computer, so it's worth testing it out first. And I highly recommend before you go in the classroom with a student, you book an IT test and test it with them. They'll just make sure that all the settings work correctly and you can be heard and seen and everything is going okay. So let's get started on the ways that I use Medicam. I'll start with some of the most basic first and then I will move on to things that maybe took me a little bit longer to learn. So the first thing that I use Minicam for is to brighten my screen and add a bit of contrast, or brighten my camera even, and add a bit of contrast to the picture. This is a really simple thing you can do. As you can see now, I'm really lucky. I'm at a friend's house and the lighting is awesome. Um, but it's quite nice just to add a bit of maybe colour to my cheeks. I can also make it a bit brighter if I want to. Super bright. <gasps> or... <laughs> It can be quite fun, you know, if you're doing like good night, good morning, whatever, you can make yourself go to sleep and then oh, wake up in the morning. So yeah, I use it for that as well, but the main function is just to, you know, make sure your camera looks good, especially I guess if you're in the US and it's quite late at night or early in the morning even, and you don't have a lot of natural light, this could be quite good just to bright your, brighten your screen up a bit so you don't have to have so many lights kind of glaring at you for your shift. So that's the first way I use it. The second thing I do with Minicam is to add these beautiful borders. Now, Dada really like us to display a logo so I always make sure I have my logo and Kat has designed some wonderful borders for us to use and uh, they're really cute you can use them as a warmer um, so you can talk about the different animals you can see she's made lots that are on her website so I'll get I'll link that down below I use quite a few of them I also have some from the Minicam website itself um, so let me just get rid of this one I'll show you another one of Kat's really because she has lots of really cute ones uh, do I have a nice colour one? Yeah, so she made like a beautiful colour um, border. So these can be really fun to use with students, especially the young ones. Um, there's also, like I, some, like I said, some on Minicam website. These are really great for role playing. Um, for example, you can go into the forest. What animals can you see? Um, I have a student that loves to be a mermaid. So we always go and dive into the sea. Um, so again, it can be nice just to add a little bit of something extra to your classroom. The next thing I do with Minicam is I use flashcards and objects. So some wonderful person, I don't know who you are, but I love you. Uh, not really, oh, kind of. <laughs> Whoever you are, thank you so much. Someone has uploaded all of the data flashcards onto Minicam website. So you can just go on there and click them and install them and they'll pop up on your Minicam. So now I have all of the data flashcards for the letters. Um, I have all the numbers and food. So these are really great, especially for younger students and trial students again. So yeah, someone's put all the numbers up with the cute little pandas. Oh. So yeah, flashcards are pretty cool. Especially if you're traveling, you can save a lot of space and money on printing if you um, have digital flashcards. I use objects too. And again, you can get loads on the uh, Minicam website, but I also make my own. Um, objects are kind of like flashcards, but there's no background to them. So they look a bit more realistic and they can be really fun. One of the best things to do with Minicam is to eat stuff. So maybe you're teaching Apple and then you can just go and eat the apple. Um, so yeah, you can get lots of different food. Uh, what else do I have? I have 
tons of cute little animals. Uh, maybe some... Oh, you can also get some animated <laughs> objects as well, which are quite nice. Um, so yeah, these are really cute to use too. Let me put that cute border back up. There we go. So objects are really nice. One thing you can do with objects, let me take the border off again, um, you can play a really nice memory game with them. So again, this is for lower levels and younger students. Say for example, you've been teaching pets. So, oh, that's a very big rabbit, wow. Um, so teaching pets, you can put your pets in the corner of the screen. So we have a hamster, a goldfish, a dog and a cat. And then I get my student to close their eyes after we've practiced them and I will hide one. When they open their eyes they have to try and remember the missing animal. So that's just one simple game that you can play with Minicam. The next thing I do, let me get rid of the animals, the next thing I do is use Minicam for rewards. Now I have tons of Minicam rewards, I have some that I use all the time like My Little Pony and Princesses and Superheroes, but I've just started making some seasonal ones, um, so I have this reward, it's a pumpkin and the students can choose which eyes they like, which nose they like and which mouth they like to make a funny pumpkin. Then we feed the pumpkin. Again, you can talk about likes and dislikes, different food vocabulary. <laughs> and this has worked really well. Some of these things are from Cats My Monster Reward, some of the eyes and mouths. So again, I'll link that below. That's a similar kind of concept. You build your own monster and really cute to use. Another one of my favorite rewards at the moment is Cats Cute picnic reward. Um, she's made some really cute food. My students seem to love the real food as well so we make our nice meal. When they get a star they can choose what food they like and we make a very usually very unhealthy um, dinner and then again at the end we eat. So yeah just another fun, fun thing you can do extra reward gives them some extra vocab and it saves space because you're not using any flashcards or any paper. Uh, the next thing you can do is use face accessories and again these are just another thing that you can use instead of flashcards and objects um, and again they're a bit more interactive so you can become say, a cat or a dog um, or this week I've been doing jobs a lot with a lot of students actually doing jobs so I become a police officer um, and they love that um, yeah you can become ooh, an astronaut so things like this are quite nice as well another thing especially for my really young students if I'm losing their attention I have a two-year-old who likes to wander off for a bit uh, sometimes I just become oh <laughs> <laughs> I find these really amusing too but sometimes I'll become two teachers and usually when she sees that I'm two teachers she wants to come back and see what I'm doing um, so these little distortions are just a nice little, li little a nice little gimmicky thing that you can do to grab your students attention if you've lost them a little bit um, so these are the ways that I use Minicam oh I also use it to show pictures and GIFs and videos. So for example, you can find some really funny GIFs online. I'm sorry if you guys say GIF, I'm a GIF person. Um, this one was to teach down, and the dog falls down the stairs. Um, so these can be really nice to show and they always get a little laugh. And it's a little bit more interesting than just showing a static picture. You can also use Minicam for videos. I like to put myself in the screen too. The parent knows that I'm still there and I'm not just chilling on my phone or drinking a coffee or chatting to my friend while I'm showing their kid a video and they can watch me sing along too. So again, you want to watch a tutorial on how to set this up. You want to check with the Dada in the IT classroom to make sure your sound settings are working and then you can use videos in the classroom really easily. This is a really cute penguin video I use for counting. Yeah, you get the 
idea. Uh, so I think this is all the ways I use Minicam. Let me just check my notes. Oh, the other thing that I do, and this is actually one of the things I use the most, is like a screensaver or wait screen. So you can use this. I use this one. You can make your own. And usually, if I am good, I try and enter the classroom a little bit early. Uh, usually, maybe a minute or ideally a minute or over if you enter the classroom a minute early you get some reward points um and then you can so you don't have to teach straight away because you don't want to teach extra for free or i don't want to teach extra for free you can pop a wait screen up and then when the clock reaches zero and it's time to teach you can just pop on screen again so that's a really nice thing to do. It's also great for no-shows if you're sat in a classroom and the student isn't there. Sometimes I don't like the idea of just being sat there and people being able to see me. So I pop on the screen, just have a bit of privacy, and then I systematically, or whatever that word is, <laughs> I know what I'm trying to say, regularly go back and forward just so they know that I'm still there. Um, but I do get to have a bit of privacy for most of the lesson. Um, so yeah, that's another way I use Minicam. If you're interested in giving it a go, it is free to start with. Uh, the free version is a little bit limited, but you can do most things on it. I use the free version for maybe two or three weeks first, just to make sure I really understood how to use it and I it worked for me. And when it did, I bought the paid version, which does have a few extra features. So if you're interested in trying Minicam, I'll leave the link down below, definitely give it a go. If you have any questions about any of the things I did today and you'd like to try them out yourself but you're not sure how, you can leave me a message and I will try and reply and tell you what I did. And if you wanted a, a tutorial on any specific thing that I did as well, then you're welcome to ask me and I will give that a go. So I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will speak to you again soon. Goodbye.